Then maybe for those who don't have it, please just listen or you can share. Maybe you can give it further. I have it on the okay, it's the praise to the 17 Alanda Masters. Born from great compassion, aspiring to help all beings, God of gods, you have attained the savior state of abandonment and realization, and you guide beings through the discourse of dependent origination. O able one, the son of speech, I bow my head to you. I bow at your feet, O Nagarjuna, most skilled in elucidating suchness, free of elaborations, the essence of the mother of conqueror's sutras, through the reasoning of dependent origination. In accord with the conqueror's prophecy, you initiated the middle way. I bow to your principal son, Bodhisattva Arya Deva, most learned and realized, who has crossed the ocean of Buddhist and non-Buddhist philosophy and is the crown jeweled among those who uphold Nagarjuna's treatises. I bow to you, O Buddha Palita, who has reached the supreme adept state and who has clearly elucidated noble Nagarjuna's intent, the final meaning of dependent origination, the profound points of existence as mere designation and as mere name. I bow to you, O Master Bhavavika, most accomplished Pandita, you have initiated the philosophical tradition wherein while negating such extremes as the arising of truly existent things, one upholds commonly verified privilege as well as external reality. I bow to you, O Chandrakirti, who disseminated all the paths of Sutra and Tantra. You are most skilled in the teaching of profound and the vast aspects of the middle way, the union of appearance and emptiness dispelling the two extremes by means of dependent origination that is mere conditionality. I bow to you, O Bodhisattva Shantideva, most skilled at revealing the, the assembly of most fortunate spiritual trainees, the excellent path of compassion that is most wondrous, the lines of reasoning most profound and vast. I bow to you, O Master Abhachanta Rakshita, who initiated the tradition of non-dual middle way in accordance with trainees' mental disposition. You are versed in the reasoning modes of both middle way and valid cognition, and you disseminated the Congress teachings in the land of snow. I bow at your feet, O Kamala Shila, you who, having explained excellently the stages of meditation of the middle way, view free of elaborations and the union of tranquility and insight in accordance with Sutra and Tantra, flawlessly elucidate in the Congress teaching in the land of snows. I bow at your feet, O Asanga, you who, sustained by Maitreya, were versed in disseminating excellently all Mahayana scriptures and taught the vast path, and who, in accordance with the Congress prophecy, initiated the tradition of mind only. I bow at your feet, O Master Vasubandhu, you who, while upholding the systems of the seven Amidharma treatises, as well as non-duality, clarified the tenets of Vaibhashika, Sautrantaka, and mind only. Foremost among learned ones, you are renowned as the second omniscient one. I bow at your feet, O Dignaga, the logician, you who, in order to present the Buddha's way through evident-based reasoning, open hundredfold gateways of valid cognition and offer as a gift to the world the eyes of critical intelligence. I bow at your feet, O Dhammakirti, you who, understanding all the essential points of both Buddhist and non-Buddhist epistemology, brought conviction in all the profound and vast path of satantika and mind only by means of reasoning. You are versed in teaching the excellent Dharma. I bow at your feet, O Vimukti Sena, you who lit the lamp that illuminates the meaning of the ornament treatise, wherein the themes of perfection of wisdom stemming from Asanga and his brother were expounded in accordance with the middle way view free of existence and non-existence. 
I bow to you, O Master Hadipada, who prophesies by the conqueror as expounder of the meaning of the mother perfection of wisdom. You elucidated the excellent treatise on the perfection of wisdom, the three mothers in perfect accord with the instructions of the Saviour Maitreya. I bow at your feet, O Guna Parapa, most excellent in both integrity and scholarship, who, having excellently distilled the intent of 100,000 disciplinary teachings, expounded the individual liberation vows flawlessly according to the tradition of Shravastivadin school. I bow at your feet, O Shakya Prabha, supreme holder of discipline, who had reigned over the treasury of jewels of the three trainings. In order to disseminate the stainless discipline teachings for a long time, you excellently expounded the teachings of the vast teaching disciplinary treatise. I bow to you, O Master Atisha, who having taught all the profound and vast tradition related to the words of the Buddhas within the framework of path of the persons of three capacities, were the most kind master in disseminating the Buddha's teaching in the land of snow. Having thus praised these most learned ornaments of the world, the excellent source of wondrous and insightful teachings, may I, with a mind unwavering and pure, be blessed, so that my mind becomes ripened and free. By understanding the two truths, the way things exist, I will ascertain how through the four truths we enter and exit samsara. I will make firm the faith in the three jewels that are spawn of valid reason. May I be blessed so that the root of liberating path is firmly established within me. May I be blessed to perfect the training in renunciation and aspiration for liberation, total pacification of suffering in its origin as well as an uncontrived awakening mind that is rooted in an infinite compassion that wishes to protect all sentient beings. May I be blessed so that I may easily develop conviction in all the path, but training to the profound points of the perfection and Vajra vehicles, by engaging in study, reflection, and meditation on the meaning of the treatises of the great trailblazers. May I, in life after life, obtain excellent embodiments that support the three trainings and make contribution to the teachings that equal the great trailblazers in upholding and disseminating the teachings of description and realization through engaging in exposition and meditative practice. May the members of all spiritual communities spend their time in learning, reflection, and meditation. Through the proliferation of supreme masters who shun wrong livelihood, May the great face of the earth be beautified throughout all time. Through their power, may I traverse all the paths of Sutra and Tantra and attain conqueror's omniscience. Characterized by spontaneous realizations of the two purposes, may I work for the welfare of sentient beings for as long as space remains. And then we do the mandala offering. And again, the second one you don't have. So then you can just think of requesting uh, Sekhon Sanjab Rinpoche to teach us Sāji pāgi jōshi Yeah. 
Takže jsem tu. Simdi tangbuji. Ani. Da. Ninji sum. Ah. Kde? Da. Ne. Chce zabrat. Da. Ano. Ah. Da. Tam da. Když jsou ty. Sa tangbuji. Ta yuan dian dan de zhu mong bu jitu, ta de zhu ji ge ji ko di gre la yang ko ke du tan da ji ge de ju ni shi ji nian de zhu an jie yang ka li su re sa ba du jie cha di du yang ko ji ji cha wo zhu ko ye se ke min du an jie zang ge ta di ni ma nian ga che ye che da di shu ga ji ge ji re che ji ta tan da Tak tuh semua le orang tu cembe sah tanggul le ya, ini tak cikgu pandai dah wajar begi, ini yang dia jual begal le ya, ini sah tanggul le begal le ya, tak? Hmm, tanggul tanam tu pun cari juga orang, sah tanggul tu tanam cari orang tu, ini dengan orang semua tu tang, tang banyu orang semua tu tang begal dia le ya, ini ah, macam mana sana tak? Ah. Siji sekolah itu sil, sil gini yang cik sungguh yer. Tapi korang sil gini yang sedia yang kantor ni, cik tunjung tangan begini macam macam. Korang ni siji macam tu, yang yang cik. Tadi siji yang yang tu, ini logo kau ni tangan, rigi kau ni saya cik. Tapi rigi kau ni, tangan tu dia dos kau dia orang cik. Rigi kau ni kerja sila na, aku cengju sambil kita rig sejauh sange rig sejauh tangan ni cakap ni orang tu. 上级给人数那边的是了不起，但我怎么说呢？不得 family 是很重要的，呃，他过去有的，就是我第一就准备，我让新给不得 family royal family 是了，就准备我明显给我，我这个这些都嘛说呢，老阿几多啊？我今天这个呃，送过有的，他今天恩地了呀，人家学的可能上级给设设的，第第六呃，他设不设不就差个有吧？ ก็สังเกตยืนเดินท่องเจ้าท่านอยู่ชีวิตชาติเราดูจำเป็นยังเช่นจุดเส้นบาลจิตานะสังเกตเสียสุดยอดเลยอันนั้นหลับบาดตั
Well, the name of the first chapter is The First Awakening Mind. The second chapter is called The Second Awakening Mind, and so forth. And so this is how all chapters are named. Anyway, Rinpoche previously explained the three types of compassion. Yesterday, uh, Rinpoche explained those. And now, uh, for today, he'll continue with a text which explains the three, the quality, the qualities of a bodhisattva on the first ground. So a bodhisattva who reaches what is called the path of seeing. Remember she spoke about the five paths yesterday. I'll just quickly repeat them. Yes, path of accumulation, path of preparation, path of seeing, path of meditation, and path of no more learning. So those five paths, the third path, the path of seeing, uh, is attained when realizing emptiness directly, when realizing the ultimate nature of all phenomena directly. And this is where the first chapter starts from, from the explanation of the qualities of a bodhisattva who has reached what is, what is called the path of seeing or what is also called the first ground, the first level. So from the moment of realizing emptiness directly on the path of seeing, Set ten levels are listed, ten grounds are listed. So that, that's, that's just the preparatory explanation Rinpoche gave. And so it says in the text uh, that he has certain qualities. Rinpoche will not explain them in all their details, but just to give you a rough sense of what these qualities are. So first of all, a bodhisattva on that level can now be called bodhisattva or another term that is used here, the literal translation from the Tibetan, is a child of the Buddhas. A bodhisattva is described as child of the Buddhas. Anyway, so having attained this first ground, having realized emptiness for the first time, now he's hailed by the name of uh, bodhisattva, bodhisattva or uh, son or well, child of the Buddha, or Buddhas. Secondly, also, he now surpasses others by way of his lineage. It's called the lineage. It's a d difficult word to translate in, in English. Um, it's like being born into the family of the Tathagatas, or the lineage of the Tathagatas. There's a word in Tibetan, it's rik. It can mean family, it can mean type, it can mean class, it can mean lineage. So um, anyway, here, what it, in the translation here, it says he's born into the lineage of the Tathagatas as well. So it's like the Buddha's family, the lineage of the Tathagatas. So in that way, from the point of view of his lineage, he now uh, surpasses other, tra pra uh, other practitioners like Shravakas and so forth. Then it goes on to say, um, doesn't it? Oh yeah. So surpassing this this point is quite important. So he's born into the lineage of the Tathagatas as well, and he surpasses others by way of his lineage. But there's also a way in which this text talk, talks about uh, surpass, surpassing others by way of his uh, awareness. And there's a debate in here: in what way does a bodhisattva? Uh, surpass, for, for instance, Shravakas and solitary realizers who aim for self-liberation, in what way does he actually surpass them? Here, awareness refers to the awareness of realizing emptiness. Therefore, there's this debate. So this is how far we present it. Excuse me, sorry. I just realized the translator uses the word uh, intelligence. So the word can be translated surpassing someone by way of awareness. It can be translated as awareness or as intelligence. So here the translator used intelligence, saying that the bodhisattva surpasses shravakas and solitude realizes by way of his intelligence. And this is where this debate starts. Yeah. Uh, Ding 
Now, with regard to a bodhisattva on that level, surpassing other practitioners such as Shravakas and so forth in terms of intelligence, well, that needs to be explained. There is a text called Six Session Guru Yoga, which is a kind of practice you do when you've been initiated into a highest yoga tantric uh, empowerment. And in there, it also says, today I've been born into the lineage of the Tathagatas. So being born in such a lineage, this needs to be analyzed. You should analyze that. You should investigate what that actually means. But according to Rinpoche's uh, opinion, this actually means that not only have you generated the mind of enlightenment, the aspiration to become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings, but you've also realized emptiness directly, which means now your mind of enlightenment, your bodhicitta, your aspiration to become enlightened is supported by a direct experience of reality, which makes it so much more powerful. Your bodhicitta is now enhanced by your direct experience. And in that way, um, you're able to benefit others in a more powerful way. So, in terms of one's own self-centeredness, which is induced by the basic misapprehension of reality, that is now undermined by that direct realization of emptiness, making bodhicitta even more effective. It also gives a special type of self-confidence, sometimes described as like a pride, like a divine pride, like a pure pride, a pure type of pride. So not pride in the ordinary sense of arrogance, but rather self-confidence. Gives you a special sense of confidence in yourself, in your abilities, which is something that is also described in the seventh chapter of the Bodhisattva's way of life by Shantideva, who emphasizes the, the importance of having self-confidence, of having confidence in yourself to be able to practice effectively, to be able to uh, benefit other sentient beings, work for the benefit of other sentient beings in a very effective way. Right. Oh, no, sure.
だってね、で、ちなみに、あらんじゅう、なんばさんにびき、あの、ルダデリア、あの、ルダシーズシジェ、チェラマワ、ドンダバス、セブザンバ、あの、ウマバスシーズン。で、シーズンゴヤデ、あの、チギ、デュジギ、カムダン、メバ、ラーメンダブジュエベナノネ、アナハバト、タイウェイゲネンガーティ、シスウデリア、マンダージュ、マスウスウギ、コデチェン、ジョメディウソンウェチ。ディアン、ソンゴヤゲン、ソンヤゴチタンナ、アニ、ゾーディ、トンバニ、タチカス、ニルクセティ、トンバニスカドゥデリ、ニルクセニアト。ニルジテンパビュンドゥザンベ、アニス、ミススススギ、サムロダメダユドゥザンベ、ディグコアタクタチネマシェナ、カンサーディチェタルンドゥヤ、カサカシェタクタルネディア、ディディジチョンドゥ、ヤンコチュシドゥザンベ、ペネマンゴジ、ジェヨンドゥ、アニディタクタ、コヤデリア、アニドゥダシーズシジソン。ディアンのゾウディガンズマソン、インジケマソン、デザインドディカジェドスラムナ、カンサーディギ、トンバニーテン、コゴウェイカンシチラ、カンサーディギ、トンバニーティギ、カトゥユネ、ティンジュンラ、マネビトネ、コアレンゴウェイジ、チャディドゥ、アネ、コ、カンサーソソソソ、サンロデラ、トゥンチェ、オ、タディラペジェン、チェラマウェイギ、ショウディシェナヤー。でら、あの、カルソウレ、カンサーダメ、ザムシマドジ、チュー、ダメ、ティンジュメドゥス。ジャンディトウソンゴヤディ、ティンジュンのマネ、マネブトネ、アネ、タワテンパタンディ、ジョンディディ、タテクニックドゥスレンディスンビ、ドゥドシディレンゴドワ。Yes. Yes. Now, in Buddhist philosophy, you find four different systems. Or four different tenet schools. They're called Vaibhashika, Sautantrika, Chittamatra, and Madhyamika. Or, to give you the English term, Great Exposition School, Vaibhashika, Sutra School, or Sautantrika, Mind Only School, or Chittamatra, and Middle Way School, or Madhyamika. Those are the four philosophical systems that are set forth by the Buddha himself. In that, the Buddha taught different sentient beings, taught his disciples, in accordance with their needs, their predispositions, their interests, and so forth. And for some, some of his disciples, it was most appropriate for them to be taught the first of these. Philosophical schools that I mentioned first, the Vaibhashika or the、um, Great Exposition School, which is considered the lowest、uh, of these four. So it was most appropriate for them because, for the time being, this philosophy that was set forth in that school was most effective for their mind. It helped them in the most effective way to understand,、uh, well, Philosophy that is understand the different ways in which phenomena exist. So, to understand the, in, in, to understand actually emptiness, that being the goal, or Rinpoche said, better to use the word the actual nature of phenomena, it's important to first teach according to what people can actually understand initially. Because for some disciples, a disciple Who was ready to hear, for instance, the teachings of the Great Exposition School, if the Buddha had right away taught them the deepest or the most profound、um, level of the ultimate nature of phenomena, they would have fallen into one of the extremes. Either they would have fallen into the extreme of nihilism, believing that nothing exists, or they would have fallen into the extreme of verification. Kind of superimposing a type of reality that is impossible. So, to superimpose too much onto phenomena or to deprecate, that is, fall into the extreme of nihilism, those two extremes. Which is why the Buddha taught
um, these different schools. So what is the design? Remember she used the English term. What, what is the design? What was the, the design of that? Well, basically it was that emptiness or the ultimate nature of phenomena needs to be understood without being in contradiction to what is called dependent arising. So the ultimate nature of phenomena and and dependent arising should not appear as contradictory to a person's mind, should not seem contradictory. If that is the case, then the ultimate nature is not uh, understood correctly. Therefore, remember she stressed, it's important to teach some disciples for the time being until their mind is ripe enough to receive deeper, more profound teachings, views such as the Vaibhashika, that is, views of the great exposition school. In that, in this school, in that particular system, according to this system, um, phenomena such as the self are described, or phenomena such as the self, their nature, their um, more profound nature is set forth without setting forth the ultimate nature or the, a more profound nature of phenomena other than the self. So in other words, the Buddha taught the Vaibhashika school to some disciples who were ready to hear about how the self in actuality exists, but weren't ready to hear about other phenomena, phenomena other than the self. <coughs> So the omniscient one, the Buddha, when, now these days, yeah, technology is so good. So, but we don't have a technology to rewind like a time machine, how Buddha gives the teaching. <laughs> but um, I'm just imagining that when the Buddha was teaching all these different schools, maybe he's not just giving this kind of a lecture in you know, one kind of like this. So probably he might feel like he will give a proper audience. Like, uh, you, 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 I, we need to talk. <laughs> 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 so then he will just check, and then he will tell you, you know, this is very suitable for you. And then and he will take uh, the person who has an imprint of the Chitta Mandra school, and then he might give this teaching to that. And similarly, uh, all this on the sutra, this all ten, tennis, serve, tennis, tennis system. system, and plus also about tantra. So he will not mix everything. He will just pinpoint one particular person said, I will give you the Kala Chakra. He will give this Kala Chakra, not the whole everybody uh, <clears throat> so that's why he uh, he's called the chogu uh, tulku supreme nirmanakaya supreme nirmanakaya uh, so uh, uh, so and now in india uh, it was a kind of like a blast by or given inspiration by Buddha himself. So all these 17 uh, Nalanta Pinditas, how they wrote this, all the schools, it's more about debate. Debate of saying like, I heard something from this, from Sutra, I cannot believe what you're saying. And then they give their point of view, well, you say, all the things does not exist by its own. It's very uncomfortable to hear. There should be some base. So maybe we are projecting something from our mind. Fabrication. 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 Fabrication of self. Of grasping at true Grasp. existence. Or did you check? So, all this, uh, and then, uh, uh, like uh, between in the uh, the Karsa, uh, uh, 
suffering because still there is something uh, i feel grasping towards something so and then they say no no you cannot take this object because then you will fall in a nihilism right? Right. all this uh, debate are designed actually for our practice it's not a debate about i want to be in this party and you should be in this party it's so not like we have this in our current world. So this is necessary. So uh, why I'm saying this? <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. now we should bring this habit. We should bring this habit into us. So how can we do this? So we don't have like the, we do have His Holiness and the Dalai Lama and our great masters. But they will not claim as I am the Buddha because the only who would say in this world who I am a Buddha is the, uh, the supreme nimana. Supreme emanation body. Im, Im, uh, supreme emanation body or supreme or Supreme nimankaya. Nimankaya. So that person, only that Buddha will claim. So others who are emanation of the Buddhas, they will not. So now what we have to do is, we should bring this habit back. That means we need to study. <laughs> we need to analyze. We cannot be like, right now, I think this way of system of studying, uh, contemplating, and then meditation. All this practice in India, back in India, very good once upon a time. Then slowly degeneration start, and then uh, Dharma went to China and uh, Tibet, and Tibet was uh, quite a strong one. And, but uh, slowly, slowly, I think due to having so much strong practice of uh, you, this is inside us. So don't <laughs> 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 I live in Megloganj, so I should be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so tantric uh, way of practice become very strong. And then slowly every, everybody wants to become the, the top school, which is in the Mahayana. And nobody uh, pay attention to the what is needed. Is am I? Do I have the imprint of Mayana or not? And do I have an imprint of Chidamanta or not? Nobody is asking this question anymore. Every people become Mayana, top level. So then. Uh, and uh, I don't think we don't we we might not have the same kind of uh, uh, intelligence or the wisdom at the time of Buddha his students does have. So we need to be uh, careful here. This this will be uh, uh, mentioned again in uh, the letter uh, in the sixth ch chapter. So I'm just. Uh, sharing this you it because it came uh, in my mind so now okay 
Now, as Rinpoche mentioned earlier, that the text says that a bodhisattva on that level, on the level of having reached the path of seeing, therefore having realized emptiness directly and reached the first ground, that such a bodhisattva surpasses others by his intelligence, his awareness, his intelligence. His intelligence, well, in the sense of surpassing shravakas, or hearers, and pratyekya buddhas, or uh, solitary realizers, these two types of practitioners who merely aim for self-liberation. Now, first of all, in order to now realize emptiness, the, the question that arises is, well, bodhisattva realizes emptiness, but do hearers, or shravakas, and solitude realizes, do they also realize emptiness or not? Do they have to realize emptiness in order to become liberated? Now, the Buddha set forth, as mentioned earlier, these different schools, philosophical schools. So the Great Exposition School, the Sutra School, the Mind Only School, and the Middle Way School. And as Rinpoche previously just now mentioned, the Middle Way School can actually also be again divided into two. The Madhyamika Svatantrika, or to use the English, the middle way autonomists, and the Madhyamika Prasangika. In English, the middle way um, consequentialists. Those are the two. Now, of all these different schools, except for the highest, which is the uh, middle way consequentialist school or Prasangika school all the other ones say all the other ones assert to become self-liberated as uh, Shavakas and solitary realizers are aiming for well self-liberation so all they need to realize is the selflessness of person the selflessness, they, they only need to realize the non-self, the selflessness of person. That's all they need to realize. However, according to the highest school, the middle way uh, consequentialist school, they would say that they disagree. In that they would say, or they, they say that emptiness or selflessness, when we talk about emptiness or selflessness, and we distinguish between selflessness of person and selflessness of phenomena, or emptiness of person, emptiness of phenomena, whichever, you want to, whichever way you want to put it, the difference is not in terms of being emptiness or not. It's just the basis. That which is negated, 
that which is negated, when you realize the ultimate nature of phenomena, what you negate is true existence. When you negate, when your mind negates true existence of the self, then what you realize is selflessness of person. When your mind negates the and the ultimate nature, the true nature of phenomena other than the self, then it's called selflessness of phenomena. So what you negate is always the same, true existence, true independent existence. But the basis may be different. So therefore the distinction between selflessness of person and selflessness of phenomena is merely the basis on which you negate something. And according to the highest, the two highest school, Rinpoche explained, the two highest school, the middle way school, which is divided in the, which is divided into the um, autonomists and the consequentialists, there's a slight difference in terms of what is exactly negated. So it is really necessary for all of you, if. Uh, if you really wanted to learn about emptiness, bodhicitta, pay a little attention about all the four uh, tenet schools. schools. Then you will know where to emphasize more, where, where is your uh, need, your need to understand the emptiness. So sometimes you will feel, or oh, the Madhyamika is too heavy, or so profound, looks like uh, the nihilism. This is really healthy, this is needed, this is really good, this is how you are taking care of yourself. Many people came to ask me about tantric stuffs. But I, I don't know much about tantra. Even I took tantric initiations from His Holiness, like, this sounds very good, precious. His Holiness is the perfect guru, and uh, having him, I should take it. Otherwise, once I lose him, no more. So I have to take it. That is the, my intention. Then I, my focus is more like, how does this tantra helps me to reduce my grasping and brings more compassion? These are the my questions. After now, almost nobody came to see me and ask a question. I'm so interested in tantra, so I wanted to study the four tenets schools. Nobody said this. And I'm waiting for this. <laughs> Nobody is saying, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so this is very necessary, like Gishima here, study very well also. And uh, uh, in the future, if you get a time, it is necessary to, if you have a wish to understand really true uh, uh, meaning of emptiness, then give yourself a time and uh, come here and then Tushita has to give this opportunity from like Gishema to give you full detail of for tenant. Also, Gishi Doji Tamdila's students, I'm pretty sure you went through this. Is there any Gishi Doji? You are one, one right? Mm -hmm. Or oh, there are few more? So it's really good. It's really good. I wanted to congratulate that yesterday you had a great time with His Holiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mm. now uh, going back to, <laughs> to the topic. Uh, mm. mm, the Rusum Dinya and the dead is my loss and a young medal. She basically my lord, you consider the canical shade with the woman to you may have more watch. Then I lord it, uh, Tanta, uh, Umo Combot of Sigurisum. Digi 
Ni ramna la yan chiorang shime ba sheba yotos. Subject, Sorry, I'm not finding the <laughs> right spot right away. I got it in Tibetan, but I didn't find it in English yet. Have anybody have studied the the debate? How to debate? Anybody? Anybody? You a little bit? You sure? Any you And nobody else, right? Oh, you you did. Oh, that's great. So actually, we all know how to debate. To be honest, <laughs> we don't. We are debating so much. <laughs> you don't need to learn. But this debate system, what I'm uh, asking about is um, this is especially designed by the great masters, uh, including Nagarjuna. Buddha himself gave us some kind of hint of this debate, but the Nagarjuna and all the great masters um, the debate system is wonderful in here because you cannot say whatever you wanted to say. Like in the courtroom. If you, even you outside, you are like, you can say anything. And you can defend, defense, defend yourself. But in a courtroom, you need to stay on the rule. So, and then the lawyer will say, speak for you, and you have certain rules not to say it. Not. So it brings the concentration much more clear. That's the beauty. That's what we need. So while this is uh, debating in, uh, in IBD, Anila uh, debate, and oh, I remember Anila and we debate oh, one time. <laughs> uh, and then uh, uh, the, while debating the concentration stays very strong. You go home, sometimes it does not stay like this. So this analytical meditation, with this kind of debate, is so good. And then uh, sometimes you are left with, uh, there's not like a, a middle, just maybe yes, maybe no. Sometimes it says like, this is the only one now. So it means uh, you have kind of hammered on your doubt. So I don't know if this is the right way to say. She's a tezumki. Ranzu chiktoko maji e de zoo kare du sena. Sem ta ma shoe che. En sem de buru de 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 du zenpe. Ta chiki ko chol pa mo lung ba di yagore ma to chiki. Ko kare se ure kante chi na sem de de ma to. So Rumshi says that well, first of all, doubt arises in our mind, an undecisive kind of mind that considers different possibilities. And eventually then with these different possibilities that you now analyze, uh, that you probe, uh, eventually you'll come to the understanding, it must be like that. 
the other possibility uh, doesn't accord with reality, it's not logical, and so eventually you come to the conclusion that this is how phenomena have to exist or should exist. So it's based no. on that. No. 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 that. So first you have doubt, and that doubt then is the first step towards uh, decisive kind of understanding. Mm. So now you have to learn this way of debate, not the normal way of debate. <laughs> So, Rubishi asked me to read this part that he has just uh, mentioned in the in the text, in Lama Tsongkhapa's text, so I'll just read the translation of this particular passage. Explaining clearly the intent of the commentary author, on the basis of this citation from the Ten Ground Sutra, where it states that on the sixth ground and below, the Bodhisattva cannot outshine or surpass Shravakas and Prateka Buddhas through his realization, it can be clearly determined that Shravakas and Prateka Buddhas also possess the knowledge that phenomena lack intrinsic existence. Without such wisdom then, like the seers who become free of attachment towards all levels of cyclic existence, except the peak of existence through the mundane path, viewing the realms of existence in terms of gradations of refinement, Shravaka and Pratikya Buddha Ahats too would be outshone through this realization even by the bodhisattva who's generated the first ground of the ultimate awakening mind. This would be so because Shravaka and Prateka Buddhas would lack the knowledge that things lack intrinsic existence. A commentary statement that otherwise, like non-Buddhist seers, Shravakas and Prateka Buddhas would not have eliminated all the afflictions pertaining to the three realms along with their seats indicates that if Shravakas and Pratyekya Buddhas have not familiarized themselves with emptiness by perfectly realizing it, they will not have destroyed the seeds of afflictions and their path will resemble the mundane path that reviews the realms of existence in comparative, in, in comparative terms of fine and coarse. I'm sorry, I need to go on because it hasn't... I haven't finished yet. Furthermore, Shravakas and Pratikya Buddhas, by lacking the realization of suchness, would then objectify the aggregates of form and so on as real, and their minds would continue to be distorted. In that case, their realization of the selflessness of persons would be superficial and incomplete, for they would not have eradicated the mind that perceives the aggregates, the basis for conceiving self or personhood as real. This suggests that if one has not eradicated the object of apprehension in relation to grasping at the aggregates, the designative basis as real, one will also have not eradicated the object of apprehension in relation to grasping at the person, the designated attribute as real. In that case, Chandakirti's text shows, since one would have not realized the person to be empty of true existence, one then would have also not realized genuine selflessness of persons in its entirety. Thank you. It's quite difficult, actually. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we do the uh, read or do our commitments like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Anila to read this because uh, mm, this contains so much uh, profoundness. Uh, it, it, this is the kind of the border uh, of uh, uh, two Madhyamika schools. So uh, this is how it becomes uh, kind of a, to merge together here. So that's why I <coughs> uh, asked Anila to read this. Otherwise, maybe some people were thinking like, uh, actually, I have to 
talk about entering to the middle way, but I'm just speaking like this, this. So they are not reading the text so much. <laughs> so I asked Anila to read this. Uh, now, Alia Tang Nambasanji Tidawichiwachi Maranzugi now, with regard to what has been explained in this text, well, it basically describes three types of reasonings that from the point of view of the highest school, the consequentialist school, uh, establish that a shravaka, that is a hero, as well as a solitary realizer, must realize emptiness in order to become self-liberated, must realize the ultimate nature of all phenomena. So in the lower schools, other than the highest consequentialist school, they would all disagree. And there's also this disagreement, therefore, between the two Madhyamika schools. The autonomists, mainly um, represented by the great Indian scholar Bhava Vivika, and the consequentialists, here represented by the great scholar uh, Chandakiti. So, Rupshi actually mentioned this earlier, I forgot to, to translate that. He said it's this debate between the two, which is where the entry into the middle way by Chandakirti really starts uh, as with regard to comparing these two schools. So, the autonomous school and the consequentialist school. It's this debate, this is where the debate starts in this text with whether someone who wants to become self-liberated needs to realize emptiness or not. Chandakirti says yes, Baba Viveka and the lower schools say no. So Baba Viveka represents the autonomous middle way school. Okay. So anyway, now getting to this point here, Rinpoche just said there you have the three reasons, the three reasonings that are set forth by Chandakirti in the form of a debate with Baba Viveka. Chandakirti being a follower of the 
consequentialist, the highest philosophical school, Baba Viveka, being a, a representative, being a master of the autonomous school. And Rinpoche said, well, it's a kind of debate, but a very respective debate. It's not like, oh, you're wrong and I'm right, and so uh, kind of like being abuse or being kind of arguing in a, in a, in a um, I don't know, aggressive kind of way. No, it's very polite and very respectful, kind of exchanging different views. Anyway, so the question is, do you need to realize emptiness or not to become liberated? Not to be, we're not talking about enlightenment, just liberation. So do you have to realize uh, emptiness of all phenomena or is it, is it sufficient to just re realize some coarse form of selflessness? Now, here, for instance, to give you an example, which is, some, which is what men was mentioned in here as well, not talking about liberation, not talking about enlightenment, talking about certain attainments that are possible with deep levels of concentration, which many non-Buddhist practitioners, non-Buddhist Indian practitioners uh, engage in. So they engage in practices to be reborn in higher states of existence, higher than our ordinary state right now, which is the desire realm, but rather in states of the what is called the form and even the formless realm. And there are different levels of existence a person can exist within because of different forms of concentration. And these practitioners, in order to be reborn in what is called the highest level of samsara existence, described as peak of existence, they have to temporarily overcome attachment to lower realms of existence. So they temporarily overcome certain coarser afflictions in order then with their concentrated mind or due to their very concentrated mind to be reborn in higher forms of existence. However, this is just temporary. They only temporarily overcome certain cause, coarse uh, types of affliction, such as attachment and aversion and so forth, and are temporarily born in these high levels of existence. But it is only temporary because they haven't removed the root of afflictive emotions. They haven't even touched self-grasping, grasping at true existence. That's still there, Rinpoche explained. So since that is still there, their existence in some of these higher states will last for a while, and then they're reborn again in lower st states. Which is why, therefore, um, in order to be liberated or fully enlightened, you need to realize emptiness to overcome the root misperception to overcome the self-grasping, which hear us, solitary realizers, and bodhisattvas attain. So they become our object of refuge. In a sense, an object of refuge, an, uh, an example to us, if you like, mainly because in their continuum, they have overcome, they have attained the cessation of um, self-grasping, the root of samsara, and therefore, they have attained the cessation of afflictive emotions, sufferings, and so forth. So they become an object of refuge from the point of view of what they have overcome by way of realizing the ultimate nature of phenomena. That's <laughs> Sabem <laughs> Only consult the Pumpu Niti, Muchi do Zimbas, Sandra with Samshi, Kaja Mayimba. Ta so de Kansagi Tame Sayati, Kansas Sinedi, any 
so now with regards so this was the first reasoning basically I'll just briefly um um, wrap it up again. So the first reasoning, if you just temporarily overcome the afflictions, you cannot attain liberation. You have to uh, um, overcome the subtlest kind of grasping. The second reasoning uh, is not talking about the non-Buddhist systems, but rather saying with regard to the system of the autonomists, and all the other systems. But here it's the mainly a debate between the autonomists and the consequentialists. The autonomists, uh, represented by Baba Viveka, they would say if you realize that the person, that the self, existing as a self-sufficient, existing, existing, well, if you, if you negate, sorry, if you negate that the self exists at the, as a self-sufficient, substantially existent entity, then you realize selflessness. In other words, if you realize that the self doesn't exist self-sufficiently and does not exist substantially as an entity different from the aggregates, then you realize selfless. Then you realize selflessness, and then you can overcome samsara. So, according to this, to the to Baba Vivika, he would say just realizing the lack of a self-sufficient, substantially existent person is enough to be liberated. However, uh, Chandrakirti would argue, well, if you, let's say, you realize now the selflessness of person, you realize the lack of a self-sufficient, substantially existent person, but all you're, you're dealing with is the self. What about the aggregates? What about mind and body? Mind and body, you've realized the mode of existence of the self, but you're still holding on, you're still grasping at mind and body because you have not realized the nature of mind and body. So there's still something left, there's still grasping left. So how can you attain liberation if you haven't overcome objectifying mind and body? In other words, phenomena other than the self, including the five aggregates, on the basis of which we usually perceive the self or on the basis of which we usually perceive an unrealistic self. Right. 
Sulla sube pungula di ambar mig be lo i cingilo di giubi cirri, kansa che da men sinin zobo toba min giude, kansa da do dobe si pungula di ambar mig be yun sun chunga mebi cirru. Dittangindra. Lama, odi. Di shodan. Di jibbo sumba di che, di dharan di wostel tu. Ale nas las. Di wostel tu. Da, tewa niba di dine zoro ba. Corsore, Gigdimbe, Lam Shira, Nabachin, the Drava Teno, Sedi, Nibat Zobche. Tasumba di Teconan, you talk about the Ternas, and this Sumba was away. Yes, Pesadin said it. Do you feel lost? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you are lost in Tushita. Good place to <laughs> lost. That they are two as you. Yes. The two are your Lord. That was just a shake on the outside. Catalans and Yingmudo. Lossless. Could you do so? That is so tight hard on it. Yes. 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 Kanji Sabem Pang Togu Mindu Seatang. Anni Lawado, Chigi Shira, number Jingi Lamla Dem Badan, Anni Chibu Chijan sort of Chagi do say, Jimson Tsu, the Carriage Lamna, Kansagi, Dame, Chirangi Sung, be Kansagi, Dame, said in Alolaya, and Kansa Dame, singing Zomitus. Singing Manzo, be Jimson Cardesana, Tandungian Pungula, and a temper me with Duas. O di ta di ge ta ta da uma uma tinju bi ge ta drum shi cha sang ji di ga ne ban de da wa cha bi ta lang yu sere ki ta ni ba de ra ta 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 di su ba cha ro ra ti de su ma ta ngi de ra chi ba ra ta da khum bu la ming ne de ma de ba zim ba zim ta na la de yo ra ti ta na ro mi shi so ra kan se gi de no kan sa ra bu te wa tang bu de shi ra na ba jin ge lam da ta chi ba chi wa cha ro chi che ni ba de sa ben Sabe pa ma to ba khansa ginelo to re ma to phum ginelo to to ya ma ta ni ba de di ta da jumjen di di jumjen shi jumjen di sumba la sumba de cha ro ba ta re mi shi di ta ta cha na se ta jumjen kar re o jumjen ta ra di ta da khansa ro shin ki tu ba tong ma ta ji kar jen sabe pa ma to ba di kar jen sana mudi bu na shi ani chran kham sun chu be sabe pa to me do kha jen sana ani chran ge Tong bani tong mendo wase. Tong bani tong yamara. Nelo tong yamara. Tong nelo tong mendo wase. Nose. Tar sumba di. Pumbu gi dendo denzen. Hayor stat sumba di kansa gi dendo yam nelo chashi to yamara. To yamara. Song song sabu. Nose. 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 So now the third type, on the basis of the first reasoning, so the third reasoning, and I'll summarize it one more time that is that it becomes clearer. So. The third type of reasoning is, well, not only um, are you not able, if you don't realize emptiness, you will only be like a, a, a practitioner who temporarily overcomes afflictions, or you'll be, you'll be someone who understands the mode of existence of the self, but not the mode of existence of uh, phenomena other than the self. Moreover, you don't understand the subtlest nature of the self, the lack of inherent existence of the self, and therefore you're unable to overcome afflictions because you're unable to eliminate the seed of all afflictions. So again, I'll just summarize the three types of reasonings. If, Chandakirti argues, if Baba Vivika, the way Baba Vivika uh, sets forth, or the, the way Baba Vivika explains the way to attain liberation, if that were in accordance with reality, the problem is the following. There are three reasonings. The first one is, you'd be like a non-Buddhist practitioner who only temporarily attains higher states of existence, but who never even deals with the subtle root of existence. So you just temporarily remove afflictions. Secondly, you only focus on the mode of existence of the person You never focus on the mode of existence of phenomena other than the person, such as mind and body. But 
With the second reasoning, Chandakirti is saying, well, yeah, you realize the, the, the selflessness of person, you realize that there's no self-sufficient, substantially existent person. But even that is not enough. As to the third reasoning, because just realizing that there's no uh, self-sufficient, substantially existent person, you're not negating enough. You need to negate more. You need to negate inherent existence, uh, true existence. You need to realize emptiness or selflessness on the subtlest level in order to be over to be able in order to be able to overcome the subtlest grasping at the self. Only then, when you realize the lack of inherent existence of the self, not just the lack of a self-sufficient, substantially existent self, but the lack of an inherently existent self, only then can you remove the, the root, that is the, the, the seeds of the self-grasping uh, mind, and in that way um, overcome all the afflictive emotions. Tapane <laughs> So the same kind of reasoning is presented by um, um, by Chanti Deva in his um, Bodhisattva's way of life, in particular in the ninth chapter. In the ninth chapter, Chanti Deva sets forth the same kind of argument addressed at or directed at Baba Viveka, saying. These are the folds, so this is the problem if you do not uh, negate enough and so forth. So these three types of reasonings are set forth in the same way and that is mentioned as well here. <coughs> so when we explain like this, if your mind is stable, if your mind is with us, <laughs> especially your mind is with uh, Chandakirti, then automatically you should feel What's happening now? What, what is he trying to prove? So all this question must be arise in you. Because these are the things that even Baba Viveka, uh, Baba, Viveka, Baba, Viveka. Baba Viveka and the great masters, they cannot uh, accept this. Because they, here, it, they feel like somewhere there is a nihilism starting. So this way, and there is a Basu Bandhu Marve. Basu Bandhu. Basu Bandhu, Basu Bandhu, what do you do? Asanga. Asanga, Rave. Tome. Tome, Asanga. Asanga, when he talked, I think he, Tome, the Yongrala, the Rave, Semzaba. Yeah, Tomegi, any Nimbo, then the Dodden day, a boat, and the Jumden dig Dodders of those in some some giru, gay, a boy, you need to serve my luck. In ten, living, you said about George with her. I'm living in the same show with her. I'm saying she doesn't be Dodders on it, turn it touch on the dig song over. She would never wish on the carroach in any seven and big dog and my two make some of the same and pair doors. Says I'm like that, the Zodi. Ranzole, Tambo, let the Ajanja in the yin. She's on a seminar lawyer. The yid, Tadi Karishan, Zimbal of New Guy with Taratua. Ranzo with Zimbal of Guyotig with Taratua. She can associate a toy made in Yajina. Uncle Azumas on the information chignending a son of his mato. Rabba, who misled the army of Sonovich. Chayon do, and we'll share a penny made in each. She's on our deep negotiations. 
Now, with regard to um, Vasubandhu, which you just asked about, Vasubandhu, for instance, also a great master who set forth the uh, Great Exposition School, for instance, uh, but also followed the Sutra School, was a follower of the Sutra, Sutra School. Well, he had a half-brother called Asanga. So Vasubandhu was the half-brother of Asanga. Asanga, a great master of the Chittamatra School. Although it is said he's actually a follower of the highest school, but because of his disciples' needs and so forth, he set forth the Chittamatra, or the mind-only school. Sorry, I started using the Sanskrit terminology. So the mind-only school uh, was represented by Asanga, and Vasubandhu was actually a follower of the, the Sutra school. Now, Asanga wanted to convince his half-brother, he wanted to teach his half-brother uh, about uh, a higher school, the mind-only school, um, kind of wanted to give him teaching so that Vasubandhu would let go of his, uh, his lower view of the sutra school. However, Vasubandhu didn't want to hear any of that. He said, no, don't, don't, I don't want to hear this. Uh, don't teach me about any other system. I'm perfectly satisfied with, my, with the philosophy I'm following. And so Asanga, knowing he couldn't convince his brother, he chose a sutra, a specific sutra of the Buddha, um, that um, set forth the philosophy of the, of the Chittamatra school or that set forth philosophy in such a way that it would convince Vasubandhu. But instead of teaching it in front of him, he just recited it near him. So he just recited it near his place. And so he, he recited it in a really beautiful way. And as a result of that, Vasubandhu listened to the words and, and actually became convinced. So this is how the story actually goes. Um, <laughs> so actually, the thing is, we all have self-grasping. We grasp at a self. So for some people, when they hear the actual view of emptiness or the actual view of how the self exists, it starts to rattle their, their self-grasping. It, it, it may make them feel uncomfortable, maybe even scared, because it, it, it rattles at the foundation of their view. Whereas there are others, well, it's just some kind of information. It doesn't really do much to their mind. It doesn't really rattle them. It doesn't affect their mind, really. I mean, they hear it as some kind of information, but it has no effect on them. But Rinpoche said that, yeah, there are those, it actually rattles them at their foundation. It, it shakes them up at their foundation because of that uh, sense of a self. Mm. The, also, um, there is a one story, one master uh, taught a student about emptiness, and then he, uh, the student was so enthusiastic to practice this, and then so he went uh, into a retreat, and then and then he got kind of a little bit of kind of realization, and then he came out of the retreat, and then uh, visit his teacher, and then uh, offer his. Uh, realizations and then she just said just meditate on the emptiness with me and then they both are meditating and then teacher immediately said bring that thermos and without any just kind of a hesitation that kid just went there and touched the thermos, bring it, pour the uh, tea, and then sat down and look at the teacher. And then teacher started drinking and said, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of the greatest teaching. <laughs> so the teacher was waiting for, when meditating, then as now, Kind of, it is like a dissolution of this grasping. And then automatically, when you feel like Thomas, then you have to feel like 
this is not thermos. This is just a part of it. Where's the actual thermos that I am so clinged to? <coughs> Has to have this kind of a question to the teacher. That teacher was waiting for this. But the student doesn't have anything that he just went and then uh, touched it without any kind of hesitation. So I'm uh, here now maybe there will be like a two takeaway from this uh, story. One could be like, oh, this is how to meditate on emptiness. Secondly, one doubt could come like, so, so should I say there's no thermos? <laughs> so what, that should this student become like a foolish or stupid? <laughs> so this could come. So, so this is necessary to understand uh, of the uh, letter it will come up uh, about uh, Yes. Rumpisha says that it's also important to understand that we need to distinguish between the two truths, the conventional and the ultimate truth, from the point of view of the mind that investigates those two truths. So you have a mind that analyzes the ultimate truth. The mind that analyzes the ultimate truth does not analyze the conventional truth. And the mind that analyzes the conventional truth does not analyze the ultimate truth. So Chantikiti stresses this, that it's important um, that these two div different levels of existence have an equal, um, an equal validity of existence because they, they don't contradict each other since the mind that analyzes the ultimate does not, as just said, does not analyze the conventional and vice versa. Mm -hmm. ตัวเรื่องนี้ <laughs> Um, so as Rupachi has explained so far, first you've got the three types of reasoning that establish that not only a bodhisattva realizes emptiness or the ultimate nature of all phenomena, but also 
hearers and solitary realizers in order to attain self-liberation, they also have to realize the ultimate nature of all phenomena, the subtlest mode of existence, that is emptiness. Thereafter, after these three reasonings, after they were uh, presented here in, in this text, then there's this discussion of Shantideva. Shantideva basically supporting this in his ninth chapter of the uh, Bodhisattva way of life. And then the next part of this text, the next section, recites a sutra, a source in the Mahayana Sutra. So the sutra is called the Discourse for uh, Shtiradya. Oh, I can't pronounce this. Um, sorry, just a sec. Uh, Stiradyasa. Stiradyasa. Okay, sorry for my crappy pronunciation. Um, and it's cited in the text called Clear Words. And remember, she asked me to just read this, this passage from the sutra. And he says, one of his, teacher, one of his teachers, his teacher at the Institute of Buddhist Dialectics called uh, Gengyatsula or Geshe Gyatsula, um, he usually cites the sutra. And Rinpoche finds it's really helpful to understand in particular the uh, consequentialist view, the view of the uh, middle way consequentialist school, because it talks about not just realizing selflessness of persons, but to also realize the ultimate nature of the aggregates. He emphasizes that. So Rumi asked me to read it. Yeah, For example, when the musical spell of a magician is heard, some, seeing a woman conjured by the magician, experience lustful thoughts. His mind driven by desire, he becomes self-conscious among his companions and feeling embarrassed, he leaves his seat and walks away. Having thus gone away, if he now engages in contemplating that woman as unattractive, transient, dissatisfying, and empty and devoid of selfhood, O oh child of the lineage, what would you think of this? Is this person proceeding in the right manner, or is he proceeding in a distorted way? That was the Buddha speaking. And then the response is, Blessed one, when there is no such woman... The striving of that person who engages in contemplating her as unattractive, transient, dissatisfying and empty, and devoid of selfhood, is a distortion. The Blessed One then responded, Here too, O child of the lineage, you should view those monks and nuns, as well as some male and female lay disciples, who engage in contemplation of phenomena that are unborn and unoriginated, as unattractive, as transient, as dissatisfying, and as empty and devoid of selfhood to be likewise. I do not say that these foolish people are practicing on the path, for they should be described as proceeding with distortion. Okay. <laughs> so, this uh, teaching of Buddha, with an example, and then uh, the conclusion of the Buddha is so good. Uh, now, wh why it's so powerful? Because normally what we do, practices. Uh, what we do, like a practice uh, for um, uh, when we talk about uh, there is attachment. And then we felt like, well, to reduce uh, this uh, attachment, uh, meditating on impermanence and the death is very effective. And then we do this. And then we see some kind of a, a, a positive uh, uh, impact, impact of that. Um, and then we do have all kind of practices uh, for whatever we have this negative uh, emotions uh, arises. But then we always forget, we always forget that uh, we don't touch on the I need I need less help. Just 
ko shi khorang ki ngol ma tse do ye chi res ngaran zu che shi che chang lo chi mi da ba ko bol so ba ta chi ge ni la so be ni chi ka re chi nyam ne chi ge ti da tam chi che ti ki chi shi de ke che ke che gom de son lo chi pe na pu bo mi da ba so do chan be pena su tong ba wo tong ba ni su su nam ju do ni sung yo ine din de su tong ba tong ba ni su su la ti pu ba mi da ba mi da ba tong ba su din de ge chi sa yo ma re me go be tum zen ni ka re se na ko ngu khoran ma ze won du chan be pu ba kwa du su la du chan be pu be khoran ge ngu de kwa du su ze ga do de chi re pu ba mi da ba re se ti pu ba de sha chi di ge ji chi ni de kwa du se chi ge chi re ที่อยู่ในจังเบตาอารันจุกิเชคันดิจิเชเบยินายังอารันจุกิซิมบาลกุจิโอจิมาตังมันพิกิชิคอรังกิกวนิพิกิจิกดุเซจิชาอันที
And in there, if thereby you realize the ultimate nature of phenomena, so you realize that it's like an illusion. So once you know it's like an illusion, you know it doesn't exist the way it appears. And therefore you know it doesn't exist inherently. Then everything else kind of falls into place. Then all the other characteristics do make sense. In that you're foolish if you just occupy yourself with the conventional existence and never dig deeper. Because once you've understood the ultimate nature of phenomena, it makes sense that things are changing. It makes sense that they have certain other characteristics. So you know they're merely labeled. This is how I understood it. Repeat. Okay. 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 ติพมพิเมเดลพิเมซิเนบาตาซิเนบาตาเจอันนี้ติมิตาบอกกอมบาอันนี้ดุงยาบอกกอมบาละสบะเดซอนยามเลนติลามกอมบามาเรซอนน
Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, does it make sense? Of course, what Rinpoche says makes sense, but I can't bring it across, so I hope what I say is clear enough. Okay. Uh, so this uh, uh, teaching actually uh, makes sense for me because we always try to forget to bring the awareness whenever we have emotions coming up. And then we always forget to look into your mind and especially we say clinking, clinking, clinking. But we will never just go where this, how this clinking really clinks. So how we impute it, survey. Impute. Impute or designate. Uh, designate. Designate. So then 100% it's there. 100% it's so good. So 100%. It's not like 99%. That's 100% there. So then uh, Buddha always, this teaching really helps me. We have to look into our mind and what we uh, uh, perceive, where? Perceive. perceive this object, so-called, so beautiful, so bad. And then we try to feel like, oh. Then ultimately, I remember the teaching of His Holiness. Uh, one, many times he uh, shared this when he was having a, a conference or a dialogue with a scientist called Aaron Beck. Aaron Beck. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he is not a Buddhist. And he is giving this kind of uh, his uh, studies shared with his holiness said, anger, when I research many long time about anger, that if we look into this kind of way, persons, uh, how it perceives, 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 Perceive. perceives, perceives, 90, 90%, 90%, it is, the all this bad, so bad, so bad. Projection. Ninety percent projection, projection. Where the projection is from his own mind. That he can, uh, he knows from his study, without the help of Nagajuna. <laughs> <laughs> so the, his holiness got really surprised. So then that brings uh, his uh, in, uh, motivation to talk with the scientists. So. It, uh, that uh, not because that scientist is simil talking similar as Nagarjuna, because of the truth. So, um, at this teaching of the Buddha, uh, the sutra, especially this sutra, really, if you can just go through the story, just go through this story, remember it, remember it, and then it really helps you uh, to go much deeper into your mind. And then you feel like, oh. <coughs> so, and then it brings you, I can easily forgive someone. And easily I can uh, listen to someone. And then, uh, and also if you look at your own mind, you will laugh at yourself. Oh, this is powerful. This is what we needed. So it's already here. So why are you not buying it? Just kidding. <laughs> 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 so, okay. So we stop here now and then uh, see you at uh, one thirty. Let's just offer a mandala first as a thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, 
we do lots of mandalas. Many, many people are wondering what they are doing. So maybe it's really necessary to, to know what we are doing here. So the mandala, many, many uh, uh, explanations are there. But one of the mandala is, uh, to offer mandala is, Buddha himself said, the teachings, what I'm going to give is, the person should not feel Buddha is pressuring you to listen it to you. Listen. It is more like you wanted to listen it. You have this intention. You have this motivation. So you are requesting this. So it's your freedom, actually. So this is very well pictured there. And then you are saying, oh, I really wanted to listen to this teaching, so I'm offering this because the priceless teaching that you are giving, I wanted to hear this. So it is more like if you really, if, uh, like, uh, I don't know who's the famous uh, people these days, singer, uh, I don't know. At the time of May, it's thing. Justin Timberlake. I so, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know now. Uh, so anyway, if he is in a megalod, and then it, even it's like uh, I don't know, one thousand, two thousand. It, it doesn't matter. You just wanted to hear his song, his moves, and so that is nothing. So whatever you feel so pre precious, normally. If you meet one Indian beggar down there, ask for 100, you go just like, no, I don't have money. <laughs> 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 I do it. So, <laughs> so then once you, you're, you want something from there, and that's something that you really like. So it is very easy to give the money because you really uh, have a value for that thing. So this is why uh, we are doing this mandala. So keep this in your mind. Otherwise, you will think, what they are doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.